In this video, we're going to look at how to read scales or how to read a measurement off of a measuring instrument. And we're going to start by doing some uh, measurements of metric rulers, such as the centimeter ruler. And then we're going to finish by looking at measuring volumes using a graduated cylinder or measuring volumes from a beaker, uh, because it's a little bit different than measuring an object using a ruler. However, the main steps are the exact same, and that's what we're concerned about here, how to read a measurement correctly. So there's two terms that we're going to talk about in this lesson, and the first term is numbered division. And numbered divisions are exactly what they're called. They refer to the divisions on your instrument that have numbers. So here, four, five, three, two, one are all numbered divisions. The other divisions that you see are unnumbered divisions. They don't have any numbers on them, and that's what we refer to as an unnumbered division. Unnumbered divisions are important to us because most of the time our object or our volume rests right uh, in between or on an unnumbered division. So it's really important that we know what is the value of our unnumbered division. We need to be able to read our measurement correctly. So how do we do that? <laughs> uh, to find the value of your unnumbered division, you need to first figure out what the difference is between your numbered divisions. So we need to take the difference between our number divisions. So I'll write that out here. Difference between our numbered divisions divided by the number of your of unnumbered divisions. So the number of unnumbered divisions. So for this ruler, if we were to figure that, uh, that out for ourselves, let's have a look. We see here that the difference between any of our numbered divisions is one. So in this ruler, the difference is equal to one centimeter. And each centimeter on a ruler that's marked has these little unnumbered divisions in between them. And if we were to just look at any of them, so we could look over here, for example, we could count them here, we could count them here, they should still be the same in each place. But if we count them, we can see that there's 10 in total. We have 10 unnumbered divisions. So to figure out what each is worth, we're going to take our difference, one centimeter, divided by 10, and our answer is going to come out to be 0.1 centimeters each. So every unnumbered division on this ruler has a value of 0.1 centimeters. And it might be helpful for you to just go ahead and write that right into your ruler. So uh, if you're doing this on paper, you might say, I'm going to write that in right here. So each one of these is equal to 0.1. Obviously, you don't need to label all of them because that's pretty time consuming, but it just helps to remind you that each one is 0.1 centimeters. Okay, let's take a look at a question where we actually are going to record a measurement. So we are going to take a reading here. And we are going to measure the length of our purple object, some type of a block. And the, we've already figured out the, the unnumbered divisions on this ruler because this is the same as the, as the previous page. So we know that each unnumbered division is worth 0.1. But let's go ahead and just maybe write that write that down again on a ruler just to remind us each unnumbered division is equal to 0.1. So when I take my reading, recall that we're able to measure the certain digits, which are the divisions on our, on our ruler. And so here my object is past the four centimeter mark. And so I can write that down with certainty. It's four centimeters. And if I look from left to right, I can count how many unnumbered divisions there are. And one, two, three unnumbered divisions can be read, but I can see here that the end of my ruler, or my object, falls somewhere in between 0.3 and 0.4. And you can ask this, this last digit right here is going to be our guess digit. And we need to estimate it. 
because it's subject to a little bit of um, uh, guessing, you might estimate it a little bit differently than I would and or than somebody else would. There's a little bit of room here, some wiggle room, um, but all of our values should be pretty close. We shouldn't be very reading it very different from another uh, another person looking at the same object and the same scale. So if I look here, this one seems to fall right about halfway between point three centimeters, okay, and my point four centimeter division. So I would guess then that it would be halfway 0 0.05 would be my guess digits. So my reading would be 4.35. And again, if you chose 4.36 or 4.34, those would also be acceptable readings here. Let's do another example. Here we have an object again, and it is on another centimeter ruler. But before I go ahead and measure it, I need to just double check that I know the value of my unnumbered divisions. And my number divisions we can see here are 1 centimeter, 0.5 centimeters is marked, and 0 would be down here, not marked, but it's starting at 0. So I can see that the difference between um, my unnumbered divisions, if I take from 0 to 1, I can see here that there's 1 centimeter in between them. I could have also measured from 0.5 to 1, and I could say that there's 0.5 centimeters between those two divisions. Again, either way, you're going to get the correct answer here. I'm just going to choose to go from zero to one centimeter here, my, my biggest number of divisions. And then I need to figure out how many unnumbered divisions I have. So if I count in between zero and one centimeter, I see that there are 10 unnumbered divisions. Okay, and so the value of each one is going to be equal to the difference between the number of divisions, which is one centimeter, divided by however many unnumbered divisions I have, and in this case I have 10. So again, I have a value of 0.1 centimeters each for each unnumbered division. And you might like to go ahead and just write that right into your, to your ruler, okay? So every, every one of these is worth 0.1. Let's go ahead and now take our reading. Okay, we are going to first write down our certain digits that we can read off the scale. So I can see that with certainty, this object is one centimeter and I can read the unnumbered divisions from left to right. I see that it's at 0 0.1, 0 0.2, but it is not as far as 0.3. And so I'm going to have to guess the last digit. I want to have some precision, uh, as, as many significant figures as I can, so I'm going to guess this last, last digit. Let's look at this last digit and let's figure out how are we going to, uh, to guess it. And if we're looking at it, I can see here that it appears to be quite close to the halfway mark, uh, but I think it's actually a little bit past the halfway mark. In fact, I would say that it's about six tenths of the way between 0.2 and 0.3. Okay, so it's six tenths of the way between the unnumbered divisions, and each unnumbered division is, is worth 0.1 centimeters. So I'm going to estimate that it is at approximately 0.06 centimeters. Okay, in other words, my guess digit here is going to be six. I think it's just past the halfway mark. If you had estimated that a little bit differently, you might have said seven, you might have said five, and that would that would be acceptable as well. But by giving that one guess digit, we can have three six six in our reading. Let's do another example. Here I have a ruler. It's not marked, so let's again assume we're in centimeters. And again, same steps. We're going to start by figuring out what's the difference between our number divisions. So here my number divisions are four hundred. 450 and 500. So the difference is equal to 50 centimeters in this case, 450 minus 450 centimeters. And again, if I count in between them, I see that I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 
five spaces, five unnumbered divisions. Okay, and what's the value then of each unnumbered division? Well, it's going to be 50 centimeters divided by however many unnumbered divisions I have, which are five. So the value is 10 centimeters each. Each unnumbered division has a value of 10 centimeters. So again, you can mark that on there. You might even like to write right underneath because we do have some room. We'll say this first one would be 410. The next would be 420, and then 430, and so on. So now that we know how to read our ruler, we're ready to go ahead and take our reading. And for this one here, um, we're looking for where the arrow is lying on the ruler. Okay, we're not actually measuring the length of, of the yellow box. We're looking for where the arrow lies. So we're looking right here. Okay, and... What can I read with certainty? Let's see. I can see that I am past 400. That is for sure. I'm past 400. Uh, but I am not as far as 410. And it looks to me like I am about halfway, little, maybe a little over halfway between the unnumbered divisions. So I am going to assume here again that I am about... If I look at this, it appears to be about six, six tenths of the way again between the unnumbered divisions, and each unnumbered division is worth 10 centimeters. So that seems to be falling at six centimeters past the 400. Six centimeters. So my, my reading here would be 406 centimeters. And remember that six centimeters right here is our guess digit. This is the one that I cannot read with certainty. It's an uncertain digit. Let's have a look at some examples using volume. And the first thing I want to mention when we're looking at liquids, and you'll notice this in our assignment in this section, is that liquids do not fall in a flat straight line when they are in a cylinder or in any type of a measuring device. They tend to make a curve, as you can see here. And we refer to this curve as the meniscus. So the word meniscus refers to um, the curve of volume, and you read a measurement of liquid at the bottom of the meniscus. So you'll notice here that the dotted line going over here, where it reads 32 milliliters, assuming this is milliliters, is read from the bottom of the meniscus. We don't read the volume up here at the top because that's, that value is the highest value and it's not representative of all the liquids. So the method of reading uh, liquids is to read the volume at the bottom of the meniscus. And we also read at eye level. So we often, when we're reading in the lab, um, we always get down at eye level and look directly at our graduated cylinder or our beaker or our barrette so that we are reading it dead on, and we're not reading too high or too low above the line of liquid. Let's go ahead and do some examples. This first example is not that realistic because the beaker is showing a flat line of liquid. Um, and of, of course, in reality, we would actually see a bit of a meniscus there, but that's okay. It's helpful for our purposes. And we're going to find our reading, but the first thing we need to do is decide the value of our unnumbered divisions. We need to figure out how to read this beaker. So we have numbered divisions here are going up by 20. We've got 20, 40, and 60. So if I find the difference between my numbered divisions, I see that it's going to be uh, 60 minus 40. Each one is 20 milliliters. Let's assume our beaker is in milliliters, as it probably is. So the difference between our number divisions is 20 milliliters, and we have two unnumbered divisions. We have two unnumbered divisions. So the value of our unnumbered divisions is going to be 20 mils divided by 2. 
And so each one is worth 10 milliliters. And you might have seen that automatically just looking at this. Uh, you could see that if there's only one, one um, dash between the 40 and the 50, it must be worth 10 mils. So this must be 50 mils right here. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and do a reading now that we know how to read this. So our liquid lies right here, just above 40. So I can say for certain that I'm at 40 mils, but I can see that I'm not as far as 50 mils. And if I were to eyeball this, it doesn't look to me like I'm at the halfway point between 40 and 50. I look to be just below it. So I'm going to say I'm about four tenths of the way between 40 and 50. Okay, so four tenths of the way between that unnumbered division. Well, each, each unnumbered division is 10 milliliters. So that's four milliliters above the 40 milliliter mark. So I'm going to put in a four here as my guess digit. And so my reading is going to be 44 milliliters. But remember, four is my guess digit. It cannot be read with certainty. Let's just do one more example here of a volume of a liquid. This time we're using a graduated cylinder, still in milliliters. And the first thing we want to do is figure out how, what's the value of our unnumbered division. We have two numbered divisions, 40 and 35. The difference is, well, we could read it right off here. It's five milliliters difference. I don't even need to do that subtraction. And if I count, how many unnumbered divisions do we have? One, two, three, four, five. I've got five unnumbered divisions here. So my unnumbered divisions, the value is going to be my five mils divided by five, which means that each unnumbered division is equal to one milliliter. So I can go ahead and mark that right on my, uh, on my flask if I wanted to. Okay, so this would be 36. This would be 37, and so on. Okay, let's go ahead and take our reading then. Clean our, let's clean it up a little bit. And our reading is going to be, well, with certainty, I can say that I am just past 36 mils, but I can see that I'm not as far as 37 mils. And remember that with a liquid, we're reading it right here as the meniscus. Okay, so I'm coming over to the left from the bottom of the meniscus. And it looks to be right about the halfway mark. So it looks to be right halfway between 37 and 36. So halfway between the mil, which is a half of a mil. So I'm going to go ahead and write my reading as 36.5 mils, where that 5 is my guess digit. Great. I hope that this is helpful for you in getting you started reading, uh, reading some scales and some measurements. And you'll get some more practice as you try the Hepton questions and as you do the uh, assignment in this section. Best of luck.